Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Tati Beauty Blendiful Sponges in comparison to your regular powder puff sponges that are out on the market right now. I'm not someone who's used to using products like this to do my makeup. I know whenever it comes along with my makeup, I usually just toss it out and grab like a brush or a beauty sponge instead. I really wanted to know if these worked, how they worked, and if they were worth the money. So I haven't even opened this up yet, which I will do right now. It does come with two. This is the Baby Blendiful. It's a soft little heart-shaped smaller sponge. This one is more of an on-the-go sponge for touch-ups. I also think it would be a great tool for like highlights or just smaller areas of the face. And then of course there is the larger sponge. This is actually a really good size. This one Tati mentions that she can do her whole face with, which is what we're gonna test out today. These powder puffs I ordered off of Amazon. It comes with a set of three and these were around six dollars including shipping and all three of these are in the same size and shape it's more typical of what we're used to seeing out there it's just a rounded powder puff right off the bat of course the Tati blendiful sponge is much larger in comparison and also has a nice point to it so that you can fold it like she mentions and get into the corners this one is just rounded it's actually pretty close in size compared to the baby blendiful if you can see except of course the baby blendiful is in a heart shape so there is another nice point and it does feel nice and smooth but in comparison to the blendiful i would say this has more of a like fluffier fabric material. You can definitely see and feel the fibers of this material more in comparison to the Velour. It's more compact, if that makes sense. You don't really see or feel the fibers on this one, whereas the Blendiful, you can really feel how soft and smooth the material is, which I actually really like. It's just like a softer, more plush, and fluffy texture. Thickness wise, they look to be pretty close. They feel about the same as well as the Baby Blendiful, but the Baby Blendiful is a little bit more stiff compared to the Round Puff, and the larger Blendiful is a lot softer and squishier. I feel like it's just easier to fold up, and the Blendifuls are machine washable. You can throw them in your laundry in a delicate laundry bag, or you can wash them with soap and water with your hands as well. The other puffs, it doesn't mention that they are reusable, so that might be why they came with three. Um, I am going to try to wash these out and just see what happens to them. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Like I said, I've never used tools like this to do my makeup before, so this is very much a first impression review. I am also gonna go along with Tati's launch video for the product just to make sure I am using it correctly with the products that I have. I'm gonna be doing one side with the Blendiful and the other side with the Powder Puff. I am probably gonna be using all three of these because it's just not big enough to do my whole face like the Blendiful. I'm gonna start with my pore filling primer. This is the Makeup Forever Smoothing Primer, and I'm just going to use this in specific areas of my face that I think that I need. I've actually already gone ahead and used a hydrating primer prior to this. She does mention that the Blendful works best with a more pore-filling textured primer instead of a hydrating one. I'm going to squeeze on a small amount of this. I'm just going to pat it into the areas where I feel like my pores are a little bit more noticeable. Oops, I just realized I did the other side too, but it's okay because the primer you can't really see anyway. So we're going to go on to the foundation. Today I'm going to be using the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. I'm in the shade Santa Fe. This is more of a full coverage foundation. I really wanted to see the application of the product using this. I think I want to squeeze the foundation on the back of my hand first, and then I'm going to take the Blendiful and just pick up some of that foundation. And she does kind of sweep and pat this on, so we're going to try that out. This is very strange feeling. It almost feels like I'm using a stuffed animal to apply my foundation. Whoa, it actually blended really easily. This is so large, it has so much surface area. I feel like it's just doing the blending for me. Okay, that looks really good. I did watch a couple other videos where I noticed people were saying they were seeing some of the streakiness at first, but actually I'm not seeing that with this foundation. It could just be the formula. 
because I'm using a very small amount of foundation to begin with since I'm picking it up from the back of my hand but it's really easy to blend and apply so far I just feel like that was effortless I see now what she meant when she said this was really thin and easy to bend because you can really get it to be whatever shape you need and you have a lot of control. I'm going to really pinch the sponge so that it doesn't mess up my brows. Now I'm going to try it out with the powder puff. Already I feel like because it is so much smaller it's going to be a little bit trickier but let's just see how it goes. I'm going to pick up the foundation again. Okay, let's just pat it. You know what? I think it just absorbed all of it. It's just like, it looks really patchy and weird. You can see the product sunk into the sponge right here. That was a lot of foundation. I picked up all of it and it it's hardly on my face. Okay, this is a fail so far. I almost don't want to use more foundation because I feel like it's just a waste. It's just eating it up with this powder puff. It does say that you can use it with wet or dry makeup. So that is a lie because it just eats it all up and I'm wasting all of my foundation. And you can see it just sitting on the sponge right here. It's all soaked in. You can tell the coverage isn't even the same because I used more foundation on this side and I can see my under eyes still, but the side, it's really nice and smooth and even. This side looks like I used a sheer coverage foundation. So far, I'm really appreciating that the Blendiful does not eat up and soak up all of your product. It actually helps you blend and use less product. Whereas this one, literally all of the product is in the sponge. Okay, let's do concealer. I'm using the Tarte Shape Tape. I'm gonna go ahead and use that nice corner. Just fold up the Blendiful and I'm gonna pat this in do you see how easy this is blending the product super easy and quick too that is the concealer it looks really nicely blended out i'm gonna do the same thing on the other side now and i'm gonna flip this one and use the clean side let's see how this goes It's taking a lot more work to blend it with this sponge. I don't know why. Like, is it because of the material? I don't understand why. It looks like it's just lifting and picking up the product instead of blending it in. I feel like I need a little bit more. That's also how I know the sponge is just eating up all of my product. Because I have to keep going in with more on this side compared to the other side. Okay, next I'm going to set my under eyes with the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. And I'm just going to use a clean corner of the Blendiful and just pick up some of that powder. So there's the powder. Maybe not so much. And I'm just going to pat it under my eyes and on my forehead where I had the concealer. I don't really like to bake, so I'm just kind of patting the powder in. That looks really soft and smooth. Can you see that? I feel like I don't get that smooth of a look with a brush. I feel like patting the powder in like this is making my skin look so smooth and flawless. Can you guys tell? Now for the other side, I do have to use a new sponge because that one is saturated with foundation and concealer. So I'm going to take a clean sponge and I'm going to dip it into the powder and set my under eyes. and the other areas of my face. I feel like this one is fine for using like a setting powder because I think this is initially what it's meant for. So the setting powder looks pretty good on this side as well. 
there's not really like a drastic difference. That was really meant to set my under eyes. I have another powder that I like to use. It's also from Laura Mercier and this is what I use to set my whole face. This is the Candle Glow Sheer Perfecting Powder in shade number two. This is my go-to. I absolutely love this powder. I have repurchased this many times. I feel like it is a must for my makeup routine. It just has a very subtle natural glow to the powder. So when you finish your face with it, it leaves your skin still looking like skin at the same time it sets your makeup and keeps everything in place so I'm just going to use that same powder corner that I use and just pick up some of this powder from the pan so it's on there and I pat it over the top of my face gives my skin a very soft luminosity even though I am using powder on top of setting powder. Anytime I'm looking really cakey, I dust this over the top and it just looks so much better. So I'm gonna do the same with the powder puff. For contour today, I'm actually not using a cream contour. I don't typically use those. So I'm gonna take the one that I do use normally, and this is from the MAC Studio Fix Sculpt and Shape Contour Palette. And I'm going to fold the blend full in half. And she mentions that this technique just makes it really easy to slice your contour. So I'm gonna give it a try. Hopefully it works okay with um, powder contour. Just kind of blending it upwards. Oh, that looks really good. I always use a brush for this, so I'm very, very surprised at how soft and easy that blended into my foundation. I'm just going to pat a little bit of this into my hairline as well. Now I'm gonna pinch it really tiny and try to get the side of my nose. I'm gonna try to fold this in half as well and pick up the product just like I did. Let's try to apply it the same way. Okay. Yeah, so it would make it a lot easier if it was bigger because now I want to kind of blend it up. I'm going to use the rest around my hairline. I think it works okay. I just kind of want to blend it out more, but it's so small that I'm running out of space. All right, so this is gonna be the real test because I actually do have a cream blush to use, but now this is going on top of powder products, so I'm a little bit nervous. I'm gonna use this Kaja blush in Koi, and it's kind of like a cushion blush. I'm gonna go ahead and use the back of the sponge, and I'm just going to dip it into the blush. So I have some on there. That might be a little too much. Let me just kind of pat it off on the back of my hand. Just very gently. Ooh, this blush smells good too. Okay, that's actually very pretty. I think it's because the material is so soft and plush that it's just like applying a very subtle, soft amount. Now I'm gonna use my third powder puff and again, I'm just going to pinch it and pick up some of the blush here. Again, I'm just going to pat a little bit off on the back of my hand and let's see how this looks. It's a little bit concentrated to one area. Again, it might be because this is just a little bit smaller. So you kind of have to work to blend it out. Just feel like the blendable side looks a lot more evenly blended. And this one, I feel like I can really see it concentrated in that one spot. But I think it's uh, because it's kind of settled on top of that powder. And lastly, I've got my highlight. This is from ColourPop. It's the Light Sticks in the shade Bullseye. It's a cream highlight product. And I think I'm just going to put it on the back of my hand like this and pick it up with the sponge. I'm gonna try the Baby Blendiful with this one because I feel like it would fit really well right on top of my cheekbones. I'm gonna pick up the product from the back of my hand. You can kind of see it on there. Just pat it in. Yeah, this is perfect for like highlight right on top of the cheekbones. Can you guys see that? That is so pretty. I'm gonna use the side of it and put it right down my nose. The same with the other side. I'm just gonna put a little bit more on and pick it up with one of the sides. Pat it in. It does the job, but I do feel like I just have to spend a little bit more time really making sure 
that it's well blended out. I'm gonna really quickly finish off my eyes and my lips off camera and I'll be right back. Okay guys, I'm back and this is the finished look using the Blendiful on this side and the Powder Puff on the other side. I'm gonna be honest, I think from a distance, there is not really a glaring difference to both sides, but it's when you really come up close, you notice the finish of both sides. I feel like the Blendiful side just looks very smooth, very well blended, whereas the Powder Puff side, you can really see the texture on my skin. It could be because the powder and the wet products just did not work well together using this sponge. I can see my pores. It for sure did not work well with my foundation. I had to use more foundation on the Powder Puff side and it just sunk right into the sponge. It hardly blended the foundation out. I was left with with a really light coverage finish from a super full coverage foundation, which you could obviously see on the Blendiful side. It was so easy to blend out and I didn't have to use as much product. I feel like it just really helps the product blend and glide onto your skin very nicely. It leaves a very soft, smooth finish, which I absolutely love. And the same with my concealer, I ended up using more on the other side and it was my Tarte Shape Tape, which I hardly use very much of anyway. I would say these powder puffs work best for powder products only and even still I would probably prefer a larger size to use with powder products so the Blendiful was great for that because it is a larger size and you can use different areas of the sponge for different products and I did also like that this was easy to fold and shape to however you need to use it the baby Blendiful was perfect for highlight it just blended that out perfectly I actually don't normally touch up my makeup throughout the day but I do see like creasing around smile lines and fine lines around around my eyes and what I do is like just like blend it out with my fingers so something like this would be great to have around to like kind of pat and blend in those areas on the go if you need overall what I'm really impressed with with the Blendiful is that it doesn't lift or remove your makeup when you're using it to blend and it also doesn't soak up your product into the sponge and I think a lot of that has to do with the soft plush texture of this fabric like I said before I can see where the product was because it obviously left a stain but it isn't wet or soaked with your product in the sponge whereas I can actually see and feel the foundation coming off of the powder puff still and obviously I love that this one tool can be used for so many products on my face it makes my life so much easier so I can see this also being really great for traveling so you don't have to pack up all of your makeup brushes Hey guys, I wanted to add a really quick update for you. I've been using the Blendiful now for the past four or five days and each day I've been using it with a different foundation and I'm disappointed to find that the application hasn't been very consistent with different products. I'm not really sure why it works well with some and not others, but when it does work, it gives you a beautiful flawless finish, which I really do like, but you just kind of have to test out your products and see how it will apply for you. Overall though, I think I just prefer using this for applying my powder products. It always works well with those. So my next test is to wash these with soap and water using my hands and we're gonna see how these come out. So I've got a huge bowl of water here and I'm gonna use a foaming hand soap. I'm gonna take the Blendiful and soak it in the water. Bring it out a little bit. Let's just put some of that soap on here. I'm gonna lather it up and make sure I get all of the spots of makeup. So I definitely think I would wash my Blendiful every day if I used it every day. So the first pass didn't really remove that foundation and the blush on the back. I need to get like a makeup remover soap and that might help it. I'm just blotting it dry with a towel. I don't think this soap is gonna remove the foundation. There's a little bit of the blush on here as well, but otherwise it looks pretty clean and it's still really soft. You probably want to leave this to dry before you use it again, so I'm just gonna let it dry. Now let's try washing the powder puff. First, let's soak it in the water, squeeze it out, get some soap on there and lather it up. I don't think this is going to remove the foundation because there's just so much of it in the puff. 
Yeah, that did almost nothing for the foundation. It's still on there. I'm gonna try to wash the one that I use with contour and blush. Since that was just powder products, maybe it'll take off the powder products better. That actually did remove the powder products. You can't see the contour powder on here anymore. The foundation did stain the sponge, but I can tell it is just a stain on the surface of the material. Overall, I'm really, really happy with the Blendiful sponges. I think it did a great job with applying and blending the products on my face. I love the finish of it. I can definitely tell the difference with using the ordinary powder puff. The finish is just not as seamless and smooth looking as the Blendiful. It's really made more for dry or powder products, which is fine, but obviously I would prefer something that I can use for all over my face and I can use with all of my my products. I did expect a learning curve using these because I've never used something like this on my face before, but this was actually really, really easy to use. Textures just do not compare to the powder puffs. They are completely different textures. It is a different material, so it works differently with your makeup products. I hope you guys found this video helpful. I did purchase this product on my own. It was not sent to me. I really was genuinely curious about this product. I know that these powder puff products have been a around for a long time and it's just kind of curious that not a lot of people have been using these for their makeup application. So I do appreciate Tati's innovation in creating like an updated version of these powder puffs. Leave your comments down below if you guys are interested in following me on my social media. Those are linked down below for my Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, and Instagram and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!